back, everybody, to the Academy of Dungeons and Dragons and the Edition and D20 Modern Actual Play Podcast. I am your host and DM, Riku, uh, here to take you on this wonderful journey, as you've heard. And if things are about to get a little bit spicy, so let's go, let's first reintroduce you to our cast. Hi, hey, everyone, this is Echo. I, I will be playing Liz and Alex, your changeling bard. And listen to the other Vibe Tribe productions, please. Please. They're all good. Trust me. Just listen to them. And a lot of these people are in those other things, so yeah, go watch them. Hello, everyone. This is Mikey, the founder of the D&D Vibe Tribe and the Bad Lad who's responsible for all these podcasts. You can follow me on my personal social medias at PopCultureGeek. Could collectively follow us at the DD Vibe Try Productions on social media as well. And tonight, I am super excited to come back and play our favorite human totem barbarian, Ramon. So let's see what kind of trouble we can get into tonight. What's up, guys? I am Mr. 218. I guess you're checking out here playing Mr. Rashmi, the uh, half dumb warlock, or the other show for tonight fights on the uh, opposite two. Awesome. And next, my doppelganger, it's the other Chris. Thanks for the compliment. I think it's the other Chris, depending on whichever, I guess, how the moon hits us at certain times. I'm playing Edgar Wallace, the probably confused wizard school of code. I'm also playing in another one of these games, and hey, let's see what happens. Hello, Los Programmas, and good night. I am Adolfo, the nerdy Puerto Rican. And uh, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram as the Nerdy Puerto Rican. In the really real world, I will be performing with the Lords of Adventure as Diego de la Fiesta at the Tennessee Pirate Festival, the New Jersey Renaissance Fair, and the New York Capital District Ren Fest. Here on the D&D Vibe Tribe, you can catch me over at Friday Night Fights as uh, the Macho Mage Silva Sparkles at the uh, in our Furosado game. I play a Shodai Tokatsukaze, but here, oh, and the Nerdy Puerto Rican cast, you can also catch that here at the Vibe Tribe, but in this game, I am playing Dagny Hutakripta, yeah, our deep gnome necromancer. Hey everybody, it's your boy Sixes, aka Dylan. You can find me on uh, Twitter, I'm an old man, so you can find me on Twitter, at Roll Sixes. You can also find me on Twitch, at Roll Sixes. I play your favorite, he shot first, Wyatt. Luckbringer the second, your fighter gunslinger. Let's go, I tell you what. Unfortunately, we are having some audio, you know, problems with one of our players, a Josh, who plays Thorgmir. So you can find him at MG Preacher on TikTok. And you can also find him across pretty much every single actual play podcast on the DD Vibe Tribe production, minus Friday Night Fight. But with all these introductions out of the way, Chris, I give that the mic to you. I appreciate that, Mikey. Thank you so much. So, to recap what we had in a previous episode, our adventurers were exploring an abandoned and burnt down library where they found a secret tunnel down into the earth and under the <laughs> island made of spit water everywhere. <laughs> Anyway, we ended up, they ended up going down below the library where they found what seems like an interesting area. And as they were exploring, they found some torture implements and other weird things. And then found a treasure room where there appears to be a local gang called The Company who is rummaging around already in the, this is just stacks of cash and money and jewels and whatnot. Our heroes try to sneak in there, but then you have uh, Rashby who decided to just barge in and say hello. And then the leader pretty much told them they were going, they better leave or they will get forced out, which caused Wyatt to take the first shot. And so, to get started, let's roll for initiative, folks. All right. All right, and we'll just go around to everybody and get your initiative. Uh, so, Echo? Let's see, 23. 23, all right. I have to Mikey? re-roll since the die was cocked. Mikey? That's a big ol' whopping seven. <laughs> all right. Rashmi? 
I brought my dice now, and I have my pretty gem dice, and I rolled a natural 20, so 22. Nice! All right. Next up is Edgar. Nine. Nine, nine, nine! Ha ha ha! What's waiting for it? What's waiting oh. for it? You aren't even in the room. <laughs> all right. Thorgmere. 17. All right. And Wyatt. 15 on the dice, plus 4 is 19 all day, baby. Let's go. 19. All right. We got our... We have our initiative. So, before we get into uh, the actual initiative order, we are going to use the held actions that we had. So, the first one was... We're actually going to go in the order that y'all actually ended up rolling initiative for. So... Alex and Liz, what was your held action? Vicious mockery of the guy who just got shot. Okay. That's uh, a 60 feet, right? I believe so. Let me check. Sorry, people. Yes, it's 60 feet. Alright, whatever. Do. There you go. I need him to make me a wisdom saving throw. Alright. Bring up the bandit captain. Wisdom saving throw. Let's go. But he rolled a 14. Let's see, where do you check for these saves? It oh, yeah, I, have a, I have a 15. Yeah. Yep, yeah, so you, you rolled a 14, right? Okay. Time for a D4 and some hurtful words. That's a 2, but he has disadvantage now, which is yep. great. If I hurtful words. You know, All right. this could have been solved so much easier if you just made peace. Instead of being stubborn. The dude and replying to you essentially saying, I don't know about this. As you can feel his words cut into him um, and doing something to his sink. Okay. So first up is actually Alex and Liz. Let's just do another vicious mockery on the same guy. Oh, you're going to do another vicious mockery? All right. I'm the same guy. Wait, wait, uh... Okay. I gotta check something to see if they all cast. I'm not sh- I think it does. It does. Oh. No, I was talking- I was looking at lesser concussion. It does not upcast. It does not. Alright. Yeah, uh, all right. yeah I'll, cast, I'll cast lesser concussion on the man. Okay, and um, there's a save for that, right? Con save. Con save. Oh, con save. Alright. Con save is, uh, 15. He saves, but he still takes half damage. Okay. I'm trying to remember what damage type this is. That's four damage. I already halved it. It was eight to four. All right. Because I got plus five to magic. <laughs> All right. So you go ahead and you use your song to basically, in his head, hit him in the back of the head. And he Don't just sleep. Just lurches forward sleep. as if something just... Took, someone took, took a hammer to the back of his head. Right. Now I have what Josh's uh, held action was. He looked at the bandit in the upper right corner and said, so your company must have good health care. And then he loosed an arrow, rolling a 27 on the attack for 9 damage. So he also got a 9. So you knock the arrow, so he, he goes ahead and knocks the arrow, hits the arrow, and surprisingly, it actually goes straight through his shoulder and almost pins him to the back of the wall. And he doesn't seem like he's moving anymore. Yeah, y'all killed him. <laughs> One shot at him. Let me see if I can find. Correctly. There we go. There we go. All right. Next up, we have Rashmi. Let's see here. Those two dudes standing over decks in front of Rashmi. How far those guys away from me? Those two? Got one at 30 feet. One at 30. They're both at 30 feet. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Can I run through that goal? I will consult. Yes. I'm going to say yes. Okay, cool. I'm going to quickly cast darkness over those two. Okay. And then I'm gonna run, and I have enough room to get basically where we're exactly 30 feet away. So that spot in the center should be 30 feet away. And I'm gonna get right. Up, I'm gonna get not right, right in here. between it. I'm gonna get right above it. Right here. Where's your mouse so I can see it? No. 
No, uh, one below that. This one. Right there, yep. Cool. Alright, and you have um, darkness. 20 feet of darkness right here, and I'm gonna attack one of them. Alright. Uh, the one to his left. You gonna attack this one? Yeah. Alright, go ahead and roll attack with, uh, yeah, you have advantage on this, because they don't have dark vision. 25 to hit, that's gonna hit. 10 points of damage. Alright, so you go ahead, and within the darkness, you slash at him. He lets out a blood-curdling scream, and just shouts, yeah! as you actually, he's still standing, but you actually feel the blood actually bursting off of him and on you. Sounds good. All right, so next up, and I'm just gonna do this one. There's your 20 feet of darkness. So, next up we have, oh, okay. It's the captain's turn now, and he can't see where he's going and trying to like feel his way around. He just heard his friend, his buddy scream. So he is going to attempt to slash at you, Rashmi, with his scimitar. Just slashing in the air. He has disadvantage, obviously, because both Vicious Mockery and he's in darkness. And he just swings wildly in the air. He slashes forward, swings wildly in the air, and then he's gonna swing back. And he, you just, you are, all you're doing is you're feeling the wind from the scimitar as he's like fanning it in the air trying to find you, completely missing you. Bitch. Alright, next up is Wyatt. Wyatt uses his social soliloquy to say, You idiot, I can't shoot him if I can't see him. And I point my gun at the one to the south here with the smaller pile of money. I have a 12 on the dice, so that is a unnatural or an unnatural 20 to hit. Uh, which one were you attacking again? Sorry. The one that's directly to the south with the small pile of money. Uh, this one. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, you can. Okay. Since he has not acted, I'll declare an automatic critical hit. Uh, oh, you done? Yep. So. Okay, that is 21 to, uh, 21 damage. So you go ahead and uh, you fire your weapon straight at him. And for a small bullet that your, that your gun is quite the surprising thing to see his head basically explode. So Wyatt turns to his left and shoots with his offhand this other joker that's uh, hit next to the guy who got pinned to the wall. All right, one moment. Unalive that one. All right, go ahead and roll. I've got a five on the dice. Before you tell me the outcome, uh, I will declare that I'm far too lucky to ever miss. All and right. I will re-roll. Okay, go for it. Second. That's a 14 on the dice, so 22 to hit. That hits. Okay, so I do not get my bonus damage on this, so just a, a straight 66. Ooh, spicy. 21 damage again. All right. You basically take your first one, blast his head off, and almost like without even looking, you take, you go and you point sideways at the other one, and his head also completely explodes and is also very dead. Why it's like, why it then finishes by saying, "I'm not gonna show off. I'll let you have that other one." This is this is pretty now visibly green seeing all this. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, Edgar, your turn. Button, where you find the button. All right, so I guess since furthest down in the bottom left corner, how far away? What's the distance there? Distance Straight there. Straight south. He is 50 feet. 50 feet. So that'll work. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and try my good old fashioned ray of frost again. All right. <laughs> See what I can do. See what I can bounce it off of this time. All right, go ahead. That gives us a good old twin. You hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. It's a B8. It's a seven. That's seven. All right. So you you go ahead and through your magical iPad, spectral <laughs> iPad, 
you end up just shooting out a giant ray of frost straight in a basically somehow magically winds around Wyatt. And Wyatt, you feel the, a bit of a chill from the line. And it hits him directly in the chest. You could he gives an audible Ugh! And you could see as the frost is just envel starting to envelop his body. And you could see him, he's just you're next, little one. It, this was a big boy, by the way. All right, so you you do that damage. All right, next is Thorbeard's turn. That's anticipation. <laughs> I need to see what happens. Let's see. The anticipation of what Thorbeard is gonna do. Is that another guy down there in the bottom left corner? Yes, yeah, and he, that's the one that that Edgar just. Get... <laughs> that is the one that Edgar just hit with the ray of frost. For some reason, that one sentence came throughout perfectly. <laughs> That'll be an 18. That'll be an 18 to hit. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. 15 damage. So you go ahead and you knock your arrow and aim straight for the one near the door. And you use Edgar's Ray of Frost that's on this one's chest as almost a bullseye. And as it hits that center point, you can see as that uh, ice shatters into a million pieces and goes straight through the dude. He collapses. Lifeless. So, let's see. Yep, it was this one. Alright. <laughs> so next up is the bandit who essentially who just got rocked with a blade. With Rashi's blade and it's just we gotta get out of here, boss! And regardless about what's about to happen to him, he is going to... Actually, he's going to take his action to disengage and run. But he doesn't know where he is in the darkness, so I'm going to roll a d4 for what direction he goes into. North is, north is 1, west is 2, south is 3, east is 4. Alright. So he takes his uh, disengage action and goes north. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he's, he gets out of the darkness and he sees... Ah, shoot, how do I do this again? Oh yeah, there we go. He sees all of you standing there at the doorway and he just goes... Yeah. All everybody else sees is this man who just ran out of the darkness with this giant gaping slash across his chest and stomach and it's just like gooey gushing blood and he's like trying to hold it in all right dagby hold up before we get into dagby's turn i gotta go all the way up here dagby it's your turn <laughs> okay so if the dm would allow Whilst all the held actions are going off, Dagny is taking his Academy issue tablet, finding the music playing app that's on it, and begins to, he puts uh, some earbuds into his ears and begins to play Wagner's opera Lohengrin. And now, if, may I do that while all the held actions went off? Yeah, totally. I'll give it uh, that fantastic. to you. Fantastic, fantastic. So now, with now, Dagny's uh, will come out from behind the, the table and come 5, 10, 20. Bring him about 25 feet closer to the doorway. Um, and yep, stop him right there. And he will see that uh, there's a mass of people there. And as he's walking, he's like conducting orchestra. And as he stops, he will look and he'll be like, Bjorn, ya, yeah, Bjorn. And he will rise his hand up. He will lift his hand up and summon his unseen servant, Bjorn. Mm -hmm. And he will say, Ah, Bjorn, was is los? Yeah. And that will be his turn. Okay. Uh, Ramon, you're up. So, uh, quick question. Yeah. Is this man within 30 feet of me? 25 Excellent. feet. Exactly. Excellent. So, Ramon sees this guy come out of the darkness and just looks at him. Mm. Much safer in there. I hate this is good. 
I hate that this is your fate. So, first off, bonus action, I would like to rage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you're raging. So, now that I am raging, so now as my action, I want to get as... I want to get within 10 feet of range with this bandit that just walked out of the darkness. So if you kindly please. <laughs> 10 feet within 10 feet? Mm hmm So let's go here. That's cool. Sweet. Now, as my action, while I am raging, I am going to roll. Um, okay, that's not horrible. This is a 16 hit. Yes, it does. Sweet. Okay, let's roll some damage. I've never, I never used the D10 before. Alright. <laughs> here we go. Yes, there we go. D10. Be kind to me. Ooh, okay. That is 13 points of slashing damage. 13 points. Alright. So, you go ahead and you're able to aim perfectly for the slash that Rashmi has already made for you. And it just made it a much cleaner and buttery slice straight through him as the that one collapses and then falls into two pieces. Such a messy yeah. end. Liz is taking her out from the group and she's puking. <laughs> Ramon quickly turns around, sorry. As he like wipes right. off the blood. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're at back at the top of the order. Alex and Liz. Liz, you're up. Liz is just gonna move towards that door. You're toward this door? Yes. Or Gil. The, okay. That, the one where the, 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 there's a dead body. Jeez. You. Fine. you land right next to the other dead body. <laughs> just not paying any attention. She's just looking at the wall. It's fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong here. All right. Rashmi, it's your turn. Rashmi, you're muted. <laughs> uh, he's gonna put his blade underneath his chin and go, looks like you have to shoot questions and uh, sh shoot questions and ask damage first. Fuck, I fucked it up! Try to kill him. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and roll your attack. Next. Ah! Alright, critical hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Oh god. Holy oh, shit. 24 points of damage. Oh, damn. By the way, you should have Hex in your thing now. Oh, so you said 24? Yeah. Oh, so you go ahead and take that slash right at him, and you hear him in the darkness, just as you can clearly hear his pain, and you've really hit something in him. <laughs> but you still hear him breathing. Well, that's fine. Oh, God. Oh! All right. Uh, well, actually, I'm gonna back. Okay. He is able to take a attack of opportunity, but it's still gonna be a no. He can't because he has no line of sight. Oh yeah, that's right. He, he needs to see you. That's right. Never mind. Go ahead. I think the 16 plus stuff like gets uh, yes. 22. That is. Go for it. 10 points of damage. All right. You hear him. You hear the blast just hit him as you all of a sudden hear him slam against the back wall. And he goes, Okay! Okay! Uncle! Uncle! Shit! I'll talk! All right, all right. Please! James? No, I'm not. Who's your daddy? Is it? You are. That's what I thought. Okay. Just as a side note, you did actually do the exact amount of damage to kill him, but I'm going to keep him alive just for this thing. Just, you did actually kill him. He's just, he just slowly stands up and he's listen. All right, y'all can have the treasure if you can get inside. None of these idiots were able to find the way to open up that door, so it's all yours if you can get in. Now, I don't know what lies beneath. I just heard it was the biggest riches of man. Oh. Just let me go home, please! Why it shoots him in the head? Roll your attack. Okay. I'm Let's casting play. silvery barbs. Hold on. On him. Wait. Too many things uh, are going on. I've got a 13 on the dice, so 21. He has this. 
So, oh, you're giving Wyatt disadvantage? Uh-huh. That's fine. Please I'll roll again. I'll, I'll roll again. All right. I'll roll again. No problem. One second. Go for it. Uh, uh, this I've, is I've... Lisa's thing. She doesn't want to... She... He already surrendered. Don't need for more bloodshed. Riku, yeah. I've got an 8 on the dice, but I'll declare that I'm far too lucky to roll a third time. I've got a 10 on the dice this time, but because I'm lucky, I get to pick of the three dice which one I want to keep. So I'll keep my 13 for a 21. And does mid pleading, he just goes, please, just let me laugh. As the bullet goes straight through his skull and he just collapses back on the floor. And why it says, no one threatens me. And I turn and point the gun at Liz and I say, if you ever do that again, I'm going to put a bullet through the your head. The man surrendered. You are as cold blooded as Alex. I don't Damn care. It, I was just out of not to uh, I don't care. They, so, yeah. hold on. So, Raspy, you feel what feels like a bottle cap hit you in the back of the head. These are very plastic oh, coins. Yeah, he's, just, he's not. He's not. And why, oh, that's and good. Why, that's why, good. Why, will that's his, why will put his guns away and just turn and smile at Rashmi? And he says, you're right. That one's Liz's. Oh, lordy. All right. So, they're all dead. They're all lying on the ground, bloodied and dead. I'm going to go ahead, Rashmi. You're... <laughs> sure, you can loot the bodies. Yes, beat me too. Yes, yes Agni. I am definitely doing the hand raise rule, so if you raise your hand, I'll answer you. <laughs> so, Dagny first. So, Dagny is... Oh, wait. First and foremost, are we out of combat? You are out of combat. Okay. Dagny is going to... Who's that in the doorway there? Edgar. Okay. Dagny is going to, again, move forward, and he's acting like he's conducting this orchestra right as the opera goes on and, and as he he's gonna come up to the two that are there he's and he's just gonna be like excuse me and he's just gonna like, dance right next to him and he's gonna stop and he's gonna take the room in for a moment he's ah wunderbar and then i will go to the dead body over by the door where liz is at yep yeah so this one that was here yep and he will take his backpack off Again, his earphones are on. He's listening to the music. The unseen servant is still uh, is still technically there, and Viso is on his shoulder. From his backpack, he's going to take out what appears to be like a like a thermos, like canister mm -hmm. deal, and then he's going to produce what appears to be like a set of like hedge clippers, and he's going to take the dead body's finger and just start to snip it off. Uh, yeah. You go. You end up doing that. So before we get to you, Thorgmir, I see you. Rashmi, after looking through all the bodies, what you find are five hundred and fifty dollars total, amongst all of them, and two potions of healing. Yeah. Yes, it's an odd number. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's what I rolled. <laughs> Everybody, ninety dollars. It was 91, so I'm going to keep the extra, like, six bucks, because my kill was stolen. That's my kill. About nine silver in the D&D &D stuff. And then I'm going to give one of the potions to Ramon, being the other frontliner, and I'm squishy, so I'm going to hold on to one. Okay. If that seems fair, so if anybody has any objections, please let me know. That's what he's doing. Cool. All right, a Thorkmere, what did you want to do? I was going to say... I wanted to go and retrieve my arrows and loot them as well, but if Ramsey already looted them, I just want to get my arrows back then. Yep, so you do retrieve your arrows. Rashmi pretty much got all that was off of them. They weren't carrying too much besides that. So, if you continue looking around, the, 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 the bodies are not going to happen. Alright, so, yes, Echo? This is going to put the bodies in the pile and okay she's gonna give them a slight fire and just i can understand some of these people like she understands some of these people like need to be killed but she looks at the man who took the final shot with complete disgust okay yeah so you go ahead you move the bodies into their own pile so now you are still in this room yes thank Jesus! Okay, remote first. Seems to be a running thing with all of us tonight. 
But anyways, so with everyone still in this room, I would like for Ramon, after kind of hearing about the door, he's gonna go and take a look at it and investigate it real quick. Go ahead and roll an investigation. Alrighty. Alright, investigation. Ooh, okay, that's not... Oh, that's a lot better, sorry. I'm blind here. Oh, that is a dirty 20. Alright, so the door is locked, mm -hmm. as the company said. You do notice that there is some kind of mechanical mechanism that is holding it shut. Like some kind of lock system. You don't see any sort of keyhole or anything to put a key in, so it's basically just a flat door with no handle, no, no nothing on it. But you can see that it will slide open when it opens. Okay, thank you. Sorry, just writing this down. No worries. Okay, so after that, Ramon will give this information to everyone else in the room. Okay. So, Wyatt, you had your hand raised, too. Yeah, so as I'm reloading my guns, I just turn to Liz, and with a... An, I, I don't return the look of disdain, but I, I just simply say, these are dangerous people, Liz. We can't be just letting random people go after we just shot their whole crew. That's how we're going to get tracked down and killed. He yes. threatened it. that was the man that was the man who started by threatening our lives. So he had to die. Oh well, he didn't die. Yeah. We, we tied him up, took him to the police, and then we talked about this too with our bosses and figured this out, but no. We shot him. Directly, yeah. directly in the head. You you use magic on him multiple times. Yes, and and you use magic on me, and I yes. won't forget. And I won't forget that. And I won't forget that you shot a man who surrendered in the head with no weapons on. I won't forget that either. He he had weapons on. Really? Oh yeah, no, he had weapons. You clearly saw a, a pistol holster, and he did have his sight out. I'm oh, sorry, not Scythe, uh, Scimitar. No. I, he, I, he was armed. He was trying I, to swing at me in the darkness of the you know, and I didn't attack him, I attacked the other guy. I understand, but the man surrendered, so I'm thinking that he doesn't have weapons on him, like, in-game. Oh, he did still have the weapons on him? Yeah. Okay. I I thought they were off. Oh, no, he, still, he had him on. He had him holstered when he was pleading for his life, but he, you could still clearly see the Scimitar and the pistol. But if we're going to go the whole magic world, I use light magic and magic that wouldn't kill him. Some of us don't have the luxury of being so benevolent. And with my experience in being a bounty hunter, like I said, we don't let people just walk away to go get their friends and come shoot us up. And as, a, and as someone who's lived long enough, sometimes killing people makes more enemies than friends. I think I like your friend better. Hey ladies, I hate to break up this cat fight, but we got a door we gotta go open. Uh, yes, I think. Oh, yeah, no, go ahead, keep going. Trust me, sorry. Okay. Right, Dagny? So, Dagny finishes taking the, the finger off, and he opens up the, his little thermos container thing, and he drops his finger, the finger in there, and he closes it, and places it back in his backpack. Slings the backpack on his back, and then he looks at the door with Ramon, he's like, Us? What, what, what do we have here? And he would like to not investigate the door, but around the door, like if there are any air vents, and more specifically, are there, is the door completely flush with the wall, or is there like a, a little bit of a gap from the... So, there is a small gap at the bottom. You do see a little bit of light coming out of the bottom of the doorway, but it's a very slim gap. There really aren't any vents or anything in this room, in this area. At least not in this area. This is was clearly one of those trap areas. Dagny is going to mentally say, Bjorn, yeah, please go to the other side and open that door, yeah. Because Bjorn is shapeless, so Bjorn is going to go through that little crack and around the other side, and if he can open the door, he's going to open the door from the other side. The whole time Dagny's sitting there conducting Wagner's 
Going green. And so this invisible spirit goes under the door and disappears onto the other side. You wait a little bit and suddenly you hear a click and the door slides open. And if I was, and if I had a sheet for the puzzle I was trying to give you, god dang it, I would rip it up right now. And, and I'll spoil it to you, for y'all since it is under one of those gold piles. If you roll good enough investigation, you would have found a button that would have opened it up. That's it. I just want it to be known that whilst whilst waiting for the door to open, Dagny is just conducting that orchestra like it's hitting the crescendo. And as he hears the, or as the door goes click, he holds his hands up, shaking like a conductor does, and then like separates them when the door opens. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but but the, the best part is no one hears the music, but you, because you have your headphones in. <laughs> awesome. All right. So before we explore what's beyond this door, we are gonna take a quick break here in the session. As for you all who are listening along with us, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll be back in a couple weeks with the rest of this mysterious area. And let's see what other murder hobo stuff our party gets into. So, we'll catch you next time. 